In this video, I'm going to talk about the Quine Maklowski method applied to and completely specified functions. I'm going to show you a step by step on how to perform this algorithm in this situation. So let's start. As we know, this is a compact way to represent a Boolean function. The number four here represents the number of binary variables. And the indexes here represent the mean terms. I mean the products where the function evaluates as one. In this function, we can represent the mean terms using their binary representation where zero mean the, that the variable in, is in the negative form and one encodes the and one encodes the variable in the positive form. So we can obtain the sum of product expression of the function by using all the mean terms. In the case of incompletely specified functions, we have the mean terms and we also have this part that is called the don't care terms where the output of the function is not important. So we can select the output value as our convenience, which is one in our case. This trick has the objective of helping to generate to generate adjacencies in the quine maklowski algorithm. Well, to this point, you're, you're, maybe you're familiar with the concepts of prime implicant and the concept of essential prime implicant. A prime implicant is a product that cannot be combined to eliminate a variable while an essential prime implicant is an implicant that cover, covers at least one output of the function that the other prime implicants cannot cover. So we are using this, these two concepts in the algorithm of quine maklowski So the quine maklowski is a simple algorithm. We only have to perform these four steps First, we, we organize the mean terms of the function by their, by their number of ones in, the, in their binary representation. These mean terms are then combined to reduce all the adjacencies. I mean, the terms that differ by a single bit are combined. Uh, and once, once there are no adjacencies, we, we identify the prime implicants. And finally, we select the essential prime implicants to cover all the output of the functions. So let's start with, with an example. We have the following function uh, that has to be minimized. The first step is to group the, the mean terms by the number of ones in their binary representation. And, but in this case of and completely specified function, we also have to consider the Donker terms in this process of grouping. So we, we create a table with the groups and the group number represents the number of ones of the mean terms in their binary representation. And the mean term index, index is located in the reduction column and the mean terms binary representation in the binary column. So we complete the table. As mentioned before, we have to consider also the don't care terms in this part of the organization. Once the organization is ready, the next step is to reduce all the agencies by applying the complement rule. This is a, the complement rule. In the rule, a variable, a variable appears when a variable appears in both positive and negative form, uh, we can eliminate it only if the other variables appears 
appears appear in a single in the single form. So we can observe in this in this application of the rule how how to how to remove the variable x2 by applying the complement rule. In our table, it's easy to identify this situation. We only have to compare the terms and finding those who differ in a single bit. But instead of comparing one term against all, we can limit the search to consecutive, consecutive groups because there is a difference of a single of a single one between between consecutive consecutive groups. Finally, we when we identify adjacent terms, we will use the dash the dash to represent a delete delete variable. Well, I'm going to show you step by step how to develop the reduction of adjacencies. First, we compare the terms between group zero and group one. If there is a difference of a single bit, then the terms are adjacent. So we can delete the bit that differs by using the dash. I have an example here with these two terms. So we have the, these two terms and we observe here that this bit is different with respect to the first term. So to delete this variable, we only put this dash. And this is the result of the combination between these two terms. And we have to mark here to mark the terms that have been combined to identify in the next, in the next iteration, our prime implicants. But also in the reduction column, we put the, com the combined terms. I mean, the reduction of these two terms is combined in a single reduction. And also we put here in the binary column, the result, the result of the combination. We have to repeat the process with all the terms of group one. So we can observe the results. Then the terms between groups one and group, uh, between groups one and group two. One important aspect here is we, we can, one important aspect, aspect to help in the comparison is to focus on the position of ones. We can observe here in this group, the position of, of one here. So it's, it's easy to find adjacent terms by identifying the terms in the next group that share the same one position. So here we have an example. And here we have another example. And here we observe that this term do, doesn't share the same one position of the mean term two. So these two terms can be combined. These are all the results of the reduction of adjacencies between groups one and two. I recommend to, to you that you pause the video and check the results. Now, these are the results. These are the results of the reduction of adjacencies between groups two and three. We can note at this point, we have, we have all the elements marked. Therefore, we don't have prime implicants yet. In the second iteration of the algorithm, we repeat the process, but in, on this occasion, we have dashes in our terms. So I recommend to focus on the dash position. 
because the terms with the same dash position are potential terms for the combination. Another important aspect is that when a combination exists, we don't have to include in our results, but we have to mark the terms because they are in, include in, in the implicate implicant generated previously. Well, these are the results of the reduction of adjacencies between groups zero and, and one. You can check the results. And now as you turn to obtain the reduction of adjacencies of groups one and two. Pause the video and do the exercise. Well, we only have one reduction between both groups. We can observe the reduction here. In the next iteration, we try to combine the terms between groups zero and one, but no one can be combined. So all of these terms are prime implicants, as mentioned before, the terms that can cannot be combined are, are prime implicants. So we identify our um, or prime implicants, prime implicants, because they can be combined. So we finish the process of reduction of adjacencies. And with our prime implicants, we will construct the prime implicant chart to select the essential prime implicants. But in this point, we, we add our prime implicants here, but in the columns, we have to consider only the mean terms of the function. We don't consider or we, we don't use the, the don't care terms. It's very important to know that we only have to, to cover the values that we really know. So for this reason, we only have to consider the mean terms. Then we mark the terms with an X that our implicants include. We observe here how, how the prime implicant include four, five, six, and seven. And we mark with an X these same terms. Remember that an essential prime implicant cover at least one output of the function. So we can observe that, that the prime implicant one cover, cover the mean term five and the mean term seven. And any other implicant can cover these two mean terms. Then we have to, to mark all the columns that cover our prime, in, prime implicant essential. So in our case, uh, there is another essential prime implicant here because the, the implicant two cover, covers the 12 min term and any other, any other implicant can cover it. So we mark the corresponding columns of the prime implicant two, and we can observe that all the terms are covered with these two essential prime implicant. Therefore, we finish our process. In this point, uh, in some cases, it's not, it's, it's not so easy to select the essential prime implicants. So I recommend reading about the row column dominance relationship, just if you face this problem. So the final result is the sum of product expression generated by our essential prime implicant. We observe the result here. Let's review. We identify some difference concerning the application of Klein-McCloskey. 
with completely determined functions. First, for the reduction of adjacencies, we take into account the don't care, don't care terms, but in the selection of essential prime implicants, we only have to consider the mean terms of the function, okay? So that's all guys. Thank you for watching this video. See you the next time.